انقضاء وانحسرت الاوصاف عن كنه معرفته وردعت عظمته العقول والذي لا تواري عنه سماء سماء ولا ارض ارضا ثم الصلاة والسلام والتحية والإكرام على سيد البطحاء سيد المرسلين والأنبياء أبي القاسم محمد المصطفى وعلى الجوهرة القدسية البتول العذراء سيدة النساء فاطمة الزهراء وعلى بعلها أمير المؤمنين وبنيها الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد لا سيما على بقية الله وحجته الكبرى الذي بيمنه رزق الورى وبوجوده ثبتت الأرض والسماء ولو الله لصاخت الارض باهلها واللعنه الدائمه على اعدائهم اجمعين من حين عداوتهم الى قيام يوم الدين اما بعد فقد قال الامام الصادق عليه الصلاه والسلام من عرف فاطمه حق معرفتها فقد أدرك ليلة القادر صلوات اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Tonight we are commemorating the day the event of the shahadat and martyrdom of the greatest lady the leader of all the ladies of paradise الصديقة الزكية المباركة المحدثة العليمة الراضية المرضية فاطمة الزهراء سلام الله عليها اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد and the hadith which I quoted from our sixth imam that is narrated in tafsir furat al kufi which is one of the very sharif and noble books of islam and is regarded very highly by our urafa and the tafsir which is for those who love the walayat of ahl al bayt this tafsir belongs to them it has so much to learn and so unique matalib and contents which may not be found anywhere else so hada zahra sallallahu alaihi alayha is uh, so great that the hadith says whoever has the ma'rifat of the haq of uh, Hazrat Fatima alayhi salam she has this person has he has achieved he has found the laylatul qadr so hada zahra salam allah alayha is laylatul qadr and also yawmullah and this has to be understood and tonight i would like to shed some light on that issue before i get to that point we find that the hadith from imam sadiq alayhi salam says li fatimatu tis li fatimata tis'atu asma in the allah azza wa jal fatima alayhi salam has nine names in, in you know in the eyes of allah fatima and as-siddiqa and al mubaraka al tahira al zakiya al radiya al mardiya wal muhaddatha wa zahra 
So these are the, the nine authentic names that have been awarded to this great lady. The reason why she is called Fatima is the word in Arabic means separator. Fatima means to separate. Fatim and Fatima means the one who separates. The reason why she is called Fatima is what uh, we have abundant hadith. We talk about that subject, you know, why she is called Fatima. And uh, one of those hadith uh, says from Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam. That Indama Summiat Fatima to Fatimata Leanha Leanal Khalka Fotemu and Marefatiha because the creatures are separated from having her Marefat. And we were talking about the early in the earlier hadith, whoever has the Marefat, the in depth recognition of her personality, of herself. He will end up achieving the Laylatul Qadr, the night of Qadr, which we all strive to achieve the greatness of that night in every month of Ramadan. And we stay up, isn't it right? In the Laylatul Qadr. So the creatures are kept away from her ma'rifat. So, it, it, so these, like uh, Ayatullah Hassan Zadeh Amuli Hafazahullah, one of our great orafa who is alive, he is saying that this is. Uh, you know, in, in the hadith we find matalibun arshiya, uh, the contents which belong to arsh of Allah subhanahu wa taala. They are not worldly things of uh, which people can easily understand and imagine. They are things which are extremely of the highest level to understand. So the nine names which are awarded to her, Fatima is uh, one of the reasons is because the creatures are kept away from her ma'rifat not everybody deserves to get the in-depth recognition and shanakht and ma'rifat of her haq and personality only those who are ahl and deserving will get it and another hadith says that a'da'aha futinu an hubbiha the reason in the masumiyat fatimatu fatimata le'anna a'da'aha futimu and hubbiha because uh, because her enemies are separated from her love the enemies of Hazrat Zahra will never get the tawfiq from Allah the opportunity from Allah to end up loving this great lady because loving this great lady has its own benefits which are countless so they don't deserve to get those benefits because of their disobedience and their animosity towards the Ahlul Bayt. So this is the key to success. They will never have the opportunity to get the key to success. Another hadith says, إِنَّمَا سُمِّيَتْ فَاطِمَةُ فَاطِمَةَ لِأَنَّهَا فَطَمَتْ شِعَتَهَا مِنَ النَّارِ Because she separated her followers from the fire. She has this is something that is, uh, you know, uh, Zahra Alaiha and her follower, her followers are already taken care of. Her followers are already kept away from the hellfire. And also, in a couple of other hadiths, we learn the reasons as لَأَنَّهَا فَطَمَةِ الشَّرْ Because she has separated the evil. So she is kept away from every type and every form of evil and shar. That's the reason why she's called Fatima. And another one says, لِأَنَّهَا فُتِمَتْ مِنَ tamth Because she's separated from the monthly period. The period. This kind of uh, the blood doesn't come for her. Because she obviously, um, this is in another hadith. The Prophet has said, Ibnati Fatima Hawra'un Adamiya. My daughter Fatima is a, is a Hur, Hawra from the paradise in the, in the, in the, from the, in the human form. Uh, Hawra in the human form. Lam tahid wa lam tatmas wa in, uh, wa inna ma sammaha Fatima lian Allah Azza wa Jal Fatimaha wa muhibbiha min al-nar. And also, the similar kind of reasoning we learn about the name Batul. 
because another hadith is that's also uh, from the Holy Prophet where he's addressing the meaning of the word al-batul he says al-batul allati lam tara humratan qat the one who doesn't see any redness walam tahid doesn't have the period fa inna al-haydha makruhun fi banat al-anbiya because uh, period is makru and disliked and hated in the daughters of the prophet allah dislikes that thing to for the daughters of the prophets so this is uh, shows the greatness of the lady how she has been uh, in uh, in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, um, about the titles of uh, al uh, tahira and zakiya obviously which is related to her taharatul qalb her cleanliness of the soul her puri- purified and pure spirituality which had nothing in it except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and radiya wal mardiya shows that she is pleased with Allah and Allah is pleased with her that means every aspect of her personality was on, on the climax of spirituality which leaves no space for any kind of dislikeness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this uh, behavior uh, can only brothers and sisters this behavior of Allah towards her can only happen when she's reflecting Allah in its in his totality that means all the names and all the sifat all the names and the attributes of Allah are completely reflected in her spirituality and muhaddatha is because obviously she was the audience of the angel after the prophet huzn and sorrow came to her so much which is not describable not imaginable for us because she herself has said la subbat alayya masaibun law annaha subbat ala al-ayyam sirna layaliya so much trouble has befallen over me that if it has befallen over the you know uh, the days it would have been converted into nights so obviously we cannot imagine that kind of thing so no one has gone through because obviously she belongs to the highest level uh, so she deserves to uh, to be uh, to be f- facing the the closeness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all the sabr that she did on these masaib it is uh, uh, so and that occasion the angel used to come and dictate her things about the hawadis about the events that will happen in the future which is where we find our aimma alayhi salam bar muftakhir they were feeling proud over the mushaf of zahra salamu alayha that's where she dictated certain things that she received from the angel directly so again it shows her azamat uh, on one aspect our imams are muftakhir they are feeling proud of this information that they received from hazrat zahra salamu alayha in the form of mushaf of fatima which is an alamat among the alaim and signs of every imam that he has the mushaf of fatima with him and nowadays it is with imam sahib zaman alayhi salam wa ajjalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif allahumma salli ala muhammad wa on the other hand we find that she has such a high spirituality that she herself is ready to receive the angel on her qalb uh, her qalb is munzalun fi how our scholars say munzalun fi just like the qalb of rasulullah was munzalun fi that means the inzal of the message the, the descending down of the message of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to happen directly on her qalb this shows the uh, istidad and qabiliyat and uh, highness of her spirituality so we find that um uh, this uh, 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 all the creatures of allah are under her command so she is serving as the uh, you know uh, uh, we have two term terms that we use al muqaddima and zil muqaddima uh, muqaddima means a prelude 
towards something. Dil Muqaddimah means that thing for which this prelude is served. So all the Anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are serving as Muqaddimah and prelude for the arrival of Khatamul Anbiya Rasul al azam Muhammad al Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So our Holy Prophet is Zil Muqaddimah. He is the one who has all that paving of the way was done by Allah for his sake. Everything else is a Muqaddimah. Every other Prophet is a Muqaddimah for him. So Zil Muqaddimah is already always Afdal and superior than the Muqaddimah. Our Prophet has to be, things are paved by every Prophet for the arrival of now, the arrival of the, everything is ready for the arrival of the final messenger. So obviously the same is perfectly true for Amir Mumin alayhi salam. None of the prophets and their deputies could parallel His Highness. He is the one who is supposed to sit directly in the mansab of Rasulullah. After him, we believe that Imam Hassan alayhi salam is the naib and khalifa of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Imam Ali alayhi salam is the khalifa of Rasulullah. So Imam Hassan, technically speaking in the istilah, uh, in the uh, ilm al-kalam, in the knowledge of our aqaid, we believe that Imam Hassan is the Khalifa of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imam Hussain alayhi salam is the Khalifa of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam is the Khalifa of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Only and only Imam Ali alayhi salam is mustaqim and directly bila wasita. He is the Khalifa of Rasulullah. So Walayat of Amir al-Mu'mineen serves as the, uh, in the same purpose just like the Walayat of Rasulullah is serving the same purpose. Just like the Prophet is Zil Muqaddimah in terms of all the previous Prophets of God. Similarly Imam Ali salam's Walayat which is guaranteeing the fact that Risalat is continuing with the same force in his time without missing out on any aspect of the Risalat and message of the Prophet. Nothing is missed in the time of Imam Ali salam. So this Walayat of Imam Ali is serving as a Zil Muqaddimah. Similarly, the Walayat of Hazrat Zahra Salamullah Alaiha, because of the fact that it is Mutlaqa in its absoluteness, it is also serving as the Zil Muqaddimah for the, all the previous ones who came before her. Because we find that uh, after the Holy Prophet and Imam Ali salam, she is the person who is having the highest level of, of uh, supremacy and superiority. Because the hadith of Imam Sadiq salam says, Nahnu hujajullahi ala al-khalq. We are the hujjats of Allah on the creatures. Wa fatimatu hujjatuhu alayna. And Fatima is the hujjat of Allah upon us. So we find the rutbah, the status of Hazrat Zahra is afwal than the 11 Imams. 11 Imams are not as high as Hazrat Zahra They are under the command of Hazrat Zahra this has to be understood. Look at the highness of Hazrat Zahra sallallahu alayha. The Imam Sahib al-Zaman alayhi salam says, Fi ibnati Rasulillah li uswatun hasana. And the daughter of Rasulullah lies a role model for me. So she is the uswa for Imam Sahib al-Zaman alayhi salam. So Zil Muqaddimah is always ashraf from the Muqaddimah. So Laqad Kanat, Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam says, Laqad Kanat mafruzat al-ta'a ala jami'a man khalaq Allah. That means Hazrat Zahra sallallahu alayha, her obedience was fariva and duty on the neck of everything that Allah created. So everything that Allah created, He is running everything in the universe because uh, one or several of his names are supervising those assignments and tasks in the world, in the universe. So if a person is, is such that every existence of the universe is under her obedience, 
This is a concrete burhan and evidence that she is reflecting all the names of Allah. So all the assignments that Allah is handling in the universe because of one or several names of His, which are Ayn al-Zat, she is reflecting all those names in her soul. That's why everything reports back to her. And she is calling the shots for everything is under her command. لَقَدْ كَانَتْ مَفْرُوضَةَ الطَّاعَةَ عَلَى جَمِيعِ مَنْ خَلَقَ اللَّهِ مِنَ الْجِنِّ among the jinns and the humans wal insi wal tayri wal wahshi wal anbiya wal malaika including the jinns and the humans and the birds and the animals and the prophets and the angels that's narrated in kitab al-awalim so we find that uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, in the incident such a person who has this highness uh, is there is no hijab between her and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She is the makhzan of asrar and uloom. All the knowledges and secrets are shared by Allah with such a personality. She is a mistaq of al-insanul kamil, the perfect human. And Al-Insan Al-Kamil is serving as the Khalifa of Allah. Every human that is the mistaq of Al-Insan Al-Kamil, the perfect human is bil fi'l, currently the Khalifa of Allah, vice gerent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when she is serving as a Khalifa, having the walayat at taqweeniya Al-Mutlaqa, you find angels who are the closest what to talk of those who are inferior Ridwan of the paradise the caretaker angel who is a caretaker guardian angel of paradise is serving as her servant and Jibreel who is the arch angel is serving as her servant proudly and Mikael who is another one of the four greatest angels is serving as her servants one is is uh, rocking the cradle in the mahad of the baby of Hazar Zahra. The other one is is moving the grindstone to prepare the food for in the house of Hazar Zahra. Alayha. And Ridwan of the paradise, the guardian angel, is coming at the door of Hazar Zahra, alayha, which shows again the Walayatun Takwini of hers as as a khayyat ana khayyatul hasanain i am the tailor of hasanain alayhi wasalam because of the fact that uh, you know um, that a while ago hazrat zahra sallallahu alayha has said to her children that your clothes are with the tailor there was no clothes with the tailor but as soon as she said it it was the way she said it was the way, the way she said, it will happen. The way whatever she says is going to happen. It will become haqiqat. What she says is nothing but haq. And when she says that thing, we find the Ridwan of the paradise is commanded by Allah to serve as khayyat and terror. Instead of introducing himself as the Ridwan, he goes to the doorstep of her Zahra, salamu alayha, knocks the door and says, Ana khayyatul hasanain. I am the tailor of Hasanain alayhi salam. So this is about the highness. Ibn Abbas says that Hazrat Zahra salamu alayha prays two rakats of prayers and starts her munajat with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She raised her hands towards the heaven and summa rafa'at batina kaffayha ila samaa wa qalat and she said ilahi wa sayyidi hadha muhammadun nabiyyuka this is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam your prophet وَأَهَذَا عَلِيٌّ إِبْنُ عَمِّ نَبِيِّكِ And this is Ali, the son of the uncle of your prophet. وَهَذَانِ الْحَسَنْ وَالْحُسَيْنِ And these two are Hassan and Hussein. سِبْتَ نَبِيِّكَ The children of your prophet. إِلَاهِ أَنزِلْ عَلَيْنَا مَعِدَةً مِنَ السَّمَاءِ Oh my Lord, send down a food spread for us from the heaven 
كما أنزلتها على بني إسرائيل the way you sent it on the children of Israel أكلوا منها وكفروا بها they ate from it and they showed disbelief كفر towards it اللهم أنزل علينا فإن به مؤمنون oh my lord send it on us for certainly we are مؤمنون we are believers in that so قال ابن عباس والله ما استتمت الدعوة the dua for the Zahra was not yet finished and completed and the food was ready in front of her from the back side the food was presented it was ready and prepared so uh, this is uh, what we find that um, this shows the the closeness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the fact that uh, she is the Laylatul Qadr uh, uh, is uh, something which proves the fact. Obviously, a person who has 11 of Al Quran and Nautic, 11 personalities who are equal to the talking Quran. 11 of the Imams who are coming from her she deserves to be called Laylatul Qadr in the Laylatul Qadr of Hazrat Zahra 11 of the Qur'ans were revealed so 11 Qur'ans are revealed in you know in the Laylatul Qadr which is the uh, the person of Hazrat Zahra alayha. she is the Akhir Bil Quran? She's the one who takes the entire Quran, Hamil Al Quran, the one who carries the mood of the entire Quran in her qalb, and she has the entire Irfan. So we, and that's why our Urufa say that this uh, discussion is enough to to prove the fact that Quran and Burhan and Irfan are always combined together and inseparable. You cannot separate Qur'an from Ilmul Irfan and the knowledge of the Ma'rifat of Allah and likewise you cannot separate the knowledge of the Ma'rifat and in-depth recognition of Allah from the Burhan and the intellectual evidences and philosophical evidences. <coughs> so, uh, she is uh, representing all the haqaiq, <coughs> all the realities of the, of the universe. Uh, she is engulfing, I mean engulfing all the realities of the universe. So in Tafsir Furat al-Kufi, he has narrated this narration from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam, where he says, أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ اللَّيْلَةُ فَاطِمَةً Imam al-Islam is explaining the Surah Al-Qadr, doing the tafsir of Surah Al-Qadr. So um, certainly we have sent it down in the night of Qadr and the night al-layla is Fatima wal-qadr Allah. Imam al-Islam says the Qadr is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah. فَمَنْ عَرِفَ فَاطِمَةَ حَقَّ مَعْرِفَتِهَا فَقَدْ أَدْرَكَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ Whoever has the ma'rifat completely, fully, complete the haqq of, of the proper way of having the ma'rifat of Hazrat Zahra alayha, has achieved, he has found the Laylatul al Qadr. وَإِنَّمَا سُمِّيَتْ فَاطِمَةُ إِنَّمَا سُمِّيَتْ فَاطِمَةَ لِأَنَّ الْخَلْقَ فُطِمُوا عَنْ مَعْرِفَتِهَا أو معرفتها وشك من أبي القسم أبي القسم is the narrator who was doubtful about the narrating of the words so there's two possibilities that he has narrated but the theme is all the same there's no difference in the theme the theme remains the same that she's named Fatima because the creatures are kept away and separated from having from her ma'rifat and in-depth recognition قوله وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement that what makes you understand what Laylatul Qadr is, what's the night of Qadr. Uh, 
So Imam Alaihissalam say in other words, Imam says that Laylatul Qadr al-Khayr min al-Fishah, yani Khayr min al-Fi'mu'minin, wa hiya Ummu al-Mu'minin. That means Khayr min al-Fishah means better than one thousand Mu'mins, and wa hiya Ummu al-Mu'minin, and she is the mother of all the Mu'minin. And then Imam Alaihissalam says, "Tanazzal al-Malaikatu wa al-Ruhu fiha." The angels and Ruh descend down in it. That means in the Laylatul Qadr, the angels of Allah descend down, and the Ruh comes down. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ يَمْلِكُونَ عِلْمَ آلِ مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم So the angels are the ones who are basically possessing the knowledge of uh, Ali Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام and وَالْرُوحْ uh, القدس and the Ruh القدس هي فاطمة بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرٍ With the permission of their Lord with every Amr and then at the end the ayat of Quran says سَلَامٌ هِيَا حَتَّى مَطْلَعِ الْفَزْرِ and Imam alayhi salam doing the tafsir says that حَتَّى يَعْنِي حَتَّى خُرُوجِ الْقَائِمِ please say salawat till the uprising of Imam al-Qa'im alayhi salatu wassalam like I said, these uh, matalib are uh, matalibun arshiya, which requires a lot of discussion around that. Uh, just like the Holy Quran, our scholars say, is the summary of all the haqaiq and realities of the universe. And uh, so all the haqaiq of the, which are summarized in the Holy Quran and this nur of Allah in the form of Quran was revealed daf'atan wahida in one shot on the qalb uh, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and in the chest in the qalb of Rasulullah which has been expanded the Quran already says alam nashrah laka sadraka had we, have we not expanded for you your heart so the same sadr of Rasulullah, which has the sharh and expansion in it already, is the is the place is the home of receiving the entire Quran in its totality, and uh, we find uh, that uh, 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 our scholars say that uh, we have narrated and adilla uh, al-naqliya wal-aqliya narrated and intellectual evidences which prove that which uh, honestly is quite hard to translate those terminologies in English language but they say in the manazil al-sayr when we are traveling towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, which are related to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we have two types of movements one is downwards descending and one is upwards which is uh, ascending su'ud and in the downward scale we find that this is mentioned in the uh, in uh, ahl al-ma'rifah's terminology as layla and when we are ascending towards the ascending scale this is mentioned in the terminology and istilah of Ahl al-Ma'rifah as Yawm and Ayyam. So that's the difference between Layl and Layali and Yawm and Ayyam is Qaws al-Su'ud and Qaws al-Nuzul in the Manazil al-Sayr towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, obviously um, uh, uh, um, in in our tafsir, um, we find in tafsir of uh, which is Ara'is al Bayan, it is mentioned that Laylatul Qadr hiya al Bunyatul Muhammadiyya sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam.
So basically, uh, this refers to the same uh, qalb of Rasulullah, which is the uh, asas and the, the ruh. Uh, ruh is considered in Ilm al Irfan to be in the status of illat, the cause for the jasad. Jasad is like ma'loom. So ruh is serving as the illat and the cause, and jasad and body serves as the ma'loom and the effect. And martabatun ba'ifa and nazila of the ruh. So uh, Laylatul Qadr is the the Albunyatul Muhammadiyya Hala Ihtijabihi fi Maqam al Qalb Ba'da Shuhud al Zati Lun al Inzal La Yunkinu illa fi Hadi al Bunya fi Hadi al Hala. Because the descending of the Holy Quran would not have been possible had it not been for this Qalb of Rasulullah to be ready to be prepared to receive this uh, nur of Allah in that situation at that time. So this shows the uh, the azamat and greatness of the same nur. So we, when we read the hadith al kisa that we recited minutes ago, we read that Prophet has say has said according to that narration in the Humini. وأنا منهم هنا رأي لحمهم لحمي ودمهم دمي يؤلمني ما يؤلمهم ويحزنني ما يحزنهم هنا رأي أنا حرب لمن حاربهم وسلم لمن سالمهم ومحب لمن أحبهم so so they are from me and I am from them the same رسالت of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم is staying alive and surviving in the universe because of the wadayat of these personalities which is ensuring the survival. So uh, this uh, status of Hazrat Zahra is, uh, is there but the behavior of the Ummah of Islam uh, is uh, something which is detestable and shameful 75 days is one narration but the more authentic one says 90 days she survives after the shahadat of her father Rasulullah 90 days only and in those 90 days which were probably the most troublesome and painful time of her life uh, that she faced in those few days and uh, um, which is unparalleled so we find that uh, the people of Medina complained to Amir Mumin about her crying and because of her crying see Imam Ali salam, so she used to then go to the maqbara of the shuhada of Uhud to the grave of Sayyidu shuhada Hazrat Hamza alayhi salam with Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain with her taking her kids to the maqabir of the shuhada of Uhud so she can cry there and we find that Imam Ali salam, later on constructs this room for her which we call in the history as Baytul Ahzan the house of sorrows because she used to go there in that room for crying Subbat alayya masa'ibun law annaha Subbat ala al-ayyami sirna layaliya so we find that this is uh, something that uh, Amir Muniyya see look at how he is expressing addressing to Rasulullah that Satunabbi'uka ibnatuka bitawafuri ummatika ala hazmiha Soon your daughter, in other words, soon your daughter is going to inform you how, the, how your ummat was trying to protect her how they were affecting her, you know, what they did towards her, in other words and فَحْفِهَ السُّعَالِ وَاسْتَخْبِرْهَ الْحَالِ Ask her and ask her the question, ask about her condition, in other words. فَكَمْ مِنْ غَلِيلٍ مُعْتَلَجٍ بِصَدْرِهَا How many 
issues remained in her sadr. That means how many things she was unable to inform anybody. How many pains she just kept it inside her heart. <laughs> She did not find any way to inform. So we find Allah And Allah is going to do the judgment and is the best of the one who judges. So Hazrat Zahra Salamudareha in the final moments of the Prophet, when Prophet was there and we find that uh, and her uh, prophet was crying. The narration says, and the tears of the prophet are falling over his cheek. <laughs> Prophet's face was full of his tears. And when he was asked the reason why he is crying, Prophet replied, which I am paraphrasing these narrations in my words, Prophet said, I am crying over what they are going to do towards my lineage after me. As if I see Fatima, they are doing zoom on Fatima. Prophet says, they are doing as if I see that they are doing zoom on Fatima and she is crying, oh my God, but nobody comes for her help. That means none of the Ummat of Rasulullah is coming for helping Hazrat Zahra Sallallahu And And when Hazrat Zahra hears that, after that, she started to cry. And Prophet asked, and she says, I am not crying over what you, what they are going to do after you upon me. I am crying because of the Mufarakat, because you are getting separated from us. And then Prophet gives her the news which makes her happy. The news the Prophet gave at that time, you will be the first person among the Ahlul Bayt to join the Prophet. Hazrat Zahra is the first person, first member of Ahlul Bayt who will join Rasulullah after his Shahadat. We find that Hazrat Zahra alayha, did her wasaya to Amir al-Mu'mineen. She sends Asma into Amais and Ummu Ayman, these two great ladies of paradise. She sends the both of them to bring Imam Ali salam, and when Imam Ali was brought, she started to do her wasaya, her wills. And she says to marry Imama after me, she's towards similar to me towards my children, in other words. And put my body into the nash, into a coffin which is kind of raised, so the body figure is not shown. That kind of coffin she's, uh, she's uh, mentioning in her will. So at the time she's carried, Nobody can recognize her body. And don't allow and don't allow any one of those who did zoom upon me to participate in her funeral. In her janaza in other words. So none of those people who are burning the door of Hazrat Zahra, none of those people who came to support those who were burning the door and who are cursing Hazrat Zahra between the burning door and the wall. So we find Hazrat Muhsin alayhi salam. Hazrat Muhsin became shaheed and he dies. And Hazrat Zahra later on dies from the same wounds which are inflicted by those criminals and zalimin. The Imam Ali doesn't allow none of those. That's the wasiyat of Hazrat Zahra. And take my janazah in the night where the eyes are sleeping. So we find when the news of the shahadat of Hazrat Zahra spreads in the city of Medina. It was just a, as if the narration says the whole city was shaking with the cries of the people. <laughs> the people gathered, the men and the women, everyone gathered at the home, at the manzil, at the home of Imam Ali a.s. Everybody came there. Imam Ali was sitting. Imam Hassan and Hussain a.s. were sitting in front of him. People came for the ta'ziyat to Imam Ali a.s. And we find Umm Kulsum goes to the Qabr of Rasulullah and she says that our pain of your shahadat became, your departure became renewed. To, that means because of the shahadat of Hazrat Zahra, the chuzn became renewed again. The chuzn of the wafat of the Prophet and the death of the Prophet becomes renewed again. In other words, we find that Abu Zayd comes out of the house, says to the crowd that the janazah, taking out of the janazah has been delayed. So the people of Medina got dispersed. And finally after a while, 
Then the, when the night came and the eyes were sleeping, that's the time where Imam Ali was around, where the few was hard and muqarrabeen only, and people of Banu Hashim, his family, they took out the janaza in the night, where no one else can, can be present. And we find this is the Muslimiyat of Hazrat Zahra. That even the janaza of the most beloved daughter of the, of the most beloved person and the daughter of Rasulullah cannot be taken openly in the daytime. Look at the zoom that the Ummah has done. Imam Ali had constructed seven graves around the grave of Hazrat Zahra so no one can discover and find out where actually she was buried. This is another Muslimiyat of Hazrat Zahra and her grave will be known to us after the zuhur of the Imam of our time. This is one of the benefits that the, the Ummah of Islam will discover only after the zuhur. So this is the Muslimiyat but we find I would like to just say to Hazrat Zahra alayha, that you are a great Muslimah. So much oppression has been done upon you but we find when we pay a visit to Karbala, we find there is another janaza, the janaza of your beloved son Hussein ibn Ali is lying over the maidan of Karbala. But there is nobody ready to provide kafan. For in your case, Imam Amir Mumin was there to provide ghusl and kafan. And there were some of the ashab and the Nuhasim present there. But the janaza of Sayyidu Shuhada is lying there and no one bothers to bring, provide the ghusl and kafan. And we find Hazrat Fidza came and gives the news to Hazrat Zainab that they are, I have a big news for you. And she replies, I don't have any big news after the death of her brother. And she says, and Hazrat Fidza says, they are trying to crush the janaza of Abi Abdullah al Hussein under the hoofs of the horses. Fakama Ashratun Mid al Fawaris. Ten of the horses were prepared to crush the janaza of Imam Hussein. Under the hooves of the horses, we find that this was never done in the history for anybody. The janaza, we find out of video, we don't know the pain of Hazrat Zainab. We cannot understand the pain of Hazrat Zainab. We cannot understand the pain of Imam Kulsoon. We cannot understand the pain of Imam Sajjad. We find after the, the Asr of Ashura, Hazrat Zainab started to gather all the ladies of Ahlul Haram and all the children you know she could not find Sakina bint al Hussein. she goes towards the Maktal towards the Maktal to find out Sakina and she finds Sakina bint al Hussein is lying over the chest of a body without any head on a body without any head and she takes Sakina in her lap and she asks her how did you find this is the body of your dad and she says I was calling Baba and this dad this this this, this body replied back to me Ilaya Ilaya Ya Bunaya come towards me come to him الله على القوم الظالمين وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي من قلب ينقلبون إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون إلهي بحق الزهراء وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين واخذل الكفار والمنافقين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين اللهم انصر واحفظ وأيد علماءنا الربانيين ومراجعنا الربانيين لا سيما الولي الفقي قائد المسلمين اللهم انصر جيوش المسلمين وعساكر الموحدين اللهم فك عن الأسراء المسلمين 
اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى وعجل في فرج مولانا صاحب الزمان واجعلنا من أنصاره وأشياعه وأتباعه وأعوانه بجاه محمد وآله الطاهرين Let's recite the ayat al-kareema One of the brothers uh, his child is uh, very sick in the intensive care unit and they have requested for dua especially for this child so let's read the ayat al karima for his shifa and for the hajat of all the mu'mineen a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem amman yujibul muhtar idha da'ahu wa yakshif as-su' amman yujibul muhtar idha da'ahu wa yakshif as-su' amman yujibul مضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المؤمنين والمؤمنات خاصة هذا المريض المنظور بجاه محمد وآله الطاهرين